begins again. Hi, I'm James Hollywood Machikari. Join me Monday through Friday for more Psycho Mayhem Morning Show on YouTube Live, Facebook, and all major podcasting platforms where we talk about all the major biker news going on in the scene. Rock on! What's up, everyone? How you guys doing? Welcome to the show. Motorcycle Madhouse Morning Mayhem is now on air. Yeah, I got everybody pissed off at me yesterday because I didn't do the freaking biker news. Like I should say, I get emails. Well, yeah, well, yeah, you all right? Yeah, I'm all right, everybody, man. Uh, as you can tell, if you're over on YouTube or Facebook, redesigned the studio is what I was up to. Yeah, you know, I've always been a radio, and I was like, man, look at all that stuff on the wall. I just like a radio station, man. Let's soundproof a little bit and go with what we know. That's where I was, and that's what I did. Hopefully, you guys like it, man. I put up them designs myself. Myself. Didn't even need China Dollar to help me. It was funny. Took her out on a ride this morning, you know. Uh, Cause yesterday I was just beat up, you know, with the studio doing some, you know, babysitting for the grandbabies, and you know, beat up. So we took a ride. Took her, get a pair of boots, you know, hundred dollar damn boots, China doll. Anyway, she puts her damn boots on my pipe. And she burned a little bit of her soul onto my damn pipe. I guess I got a little bit of her that's always gonna be with me on the fat boy. So, then we go out to uh, Kegel, because she's always wanted a Harley Davidson friggin' hoodie. And everybody knows how I feel. I will not get a shirt. I will not buy a shirt with the Harley Davidson logo on it. Well, if it maybe had it upside down, I would. But anyway, go out to Kegel. She gets her sweatshirt or her hoodie, whatever it is. And it's a pretty nice hoodie, man. For frickin' 60 bucks. Yeah. So that's one six zero I spend on the old lady. Then I'm hungry. Okay, we're hungry. I said, well, you know, I like the bike ride, but what I'm missing right now is some titties. So it's time to go to Hooters. Over to Hooters with my buddy and her. And she falls in love. Yeah, puts me over in the corner. And says, you know what, you stay over there, Hollywood. You know, you always get the attention. Which, you know, I gotta admit, man. Everybody stops me, says hi, love the show, that kind of stuff. So I'm in the corner, and she's talking with a hot-ass Hooters girl. Hot, baby! And I actually put that picture of her over on the Instagram account with this one. Go over to the Instagram account. This broad was smoking, smoking. And you know what I like about Hooters is they still have the 80s freaking costumes or their work clothes. You got to love it. They got them nice shirts, the freaking shorts that ride all the way up their ass, the nylons. Oh my God, the nylons drive me crazy. Women these days do not know how to dress. Nylons. Get to see all those pretty little curves. So, she, uh, can I get a picture with you? Well, of course. I just gave the broad a $20 tip. She better take a picture with you. It was an expensive damn ride today. But I have to say, it was awesome. You know, before I recorded the show, it was riding my bike and get titties. Yeah, I got to see the titties, but uh, I think she got the better end of the deal out of this one. I really believe that one. My God, the things that we do for our old ladies, man. Uh, anyway, also on Instagram, I put out a little small video. Yeah, I do little videos, man, you know, when I'm out of the studio uh, about motorcycle maintenance. What you going to do for winterizing? Then you get all the smart asses coming back. Well, real bikers don't winterize it. They ride all year round. 
Oh, I call bullshit. F you got, yeah, bullshit. <laughs> yeah, I ride all year round. Yeah, why there's freaking 10 feet of snow. Yeah, uh-huh. You know what? Maybe the younger ones, because when I was younger, I used to do that stupid, and I was stupid for doing it. Uh, because it was cold. I froze my balls off. But, yeah. Not taking off the fat boy. I don't want salt all over my damn bike. Where you have to clean the salt up after it so it don't start rusting. But what are some of the things that you guys do? You know, I like all my fluids fresh. Fresh. I, every one of them, grease it up. Uh, that's what I do. You know, the battery charger. But you know what? I put the maintainer on there all freaking the time. So... I uh, just got a new battery in uh, the Fab Boy, or yeah, in the Fab Boy. It actually lasts me quite a long time. Uh, no, what am I talking about? That was the Suzuki. The one that on the uh, the Fab Boy was a year. Yeah, that's the one. Uh, had the Harley Davidson symbol on it. Yeah, that never. I went and bought a brand new Daryl S Gold. Some good stuff from AutoZone, man. Uh, has good warranty, decent warranty. So uh, I know a lot of other people. They'll just throw it over to the dealerships, get it stored, which, hey, that's on them if they don't have a garage. Don't ever leave your bike. I hate that up north when you see somebody that has their bike out there, but no tarp. There's snow all over the damn thing. It's like, man, you know, you're supposed to take care of your bike better than the old lady. I guess they did not get that damn memo. So, you know, that was my day today. And, you know, it was a pretty damn good day. Got out with the old lady, rode with my buddy. Uh, you know, the studio's redone the way I wanted it. Nothing but radio in here, baby. I love my radio. Uh, anyway, uh, you know what? Why we were at Hooters. Why we were at Hooters. Oh, by the way, before I get to my story on that. Pound. Pound. Dark side, baby. I guess our show's the dark side. Luke, I'm your father, Luke. We don't talk about enough light on the show. Pound, dark side, baby. And rock on, of course. Anyway, she slips me over her phone. And I'm okay, okay, what is it? Well, I guess last night on the Tucker Carlson show, I love old Tucker, boy. He's straight shooter. Straight shooter. It's no wonder that he has the best ratings on TV. Anyway, he got a whistleblower on. A Chinese, you know, real up there. Uh, that with the who, she has all the connections. Coronavirus. It was indeed made in a lab. They know that. And it was indeed, according to this whistleblower, who has the connections, who would know, was released on purpose. You're saying to yourself, well, why would they do something like that? You do not know rich people. You do not know those who would do anything they can to stay in power. Look what that moron in World War II did. 60 million people died in that war. All he wanted was power. So, do you think the 180,000 that's died in the U.S. really means anything to these type of people? But anyway, it was released, I believe, if this is true, because they needed a disruption in this country. They needed the economy to go down. They don't like Trump, baby. He's too hard on their peckers. He rides them and rides them and rides them. Don't give them time to breathe. Of course they want this weak, uh, empty vessel to be president. And uh, you know what? I can almost guarantee, because if you notice, first it was Corona. Then it was these rioters and protesters. And if you listen to Tim Poole, Love that guy. Love that friggin', uh, I, he looks like Spidey Man and stuff with that little beanie and stuff. But anyway, there is actual proof for the Kenosha one. Out of a hundred and something, uh, 144, whatever the number was, over a hundred of them were from out of town. 
and he talked about how he used to cover it on the ground, and you would know who the rioters were coming in because they were on the freaking plane with helmets and everything with them. So you got Corona, then you got the riots, then you got mail-in ballots. What do you think is going on here? The one reason why people in power didn't like him is because they couldn't tell him what to do. He didn't need them. He didn't need their money. So when I saw this story, and I actually talked about it on episode 11, which was last night, on the Hollywood and China Dial show, you need to go over there and check that show out. Please subscribe. Please subscribe over on Facebook or no YouTube <laughs> I'm not on Facebook yet but everybody keeps on asking me when the hell are you gonna do this well anyway you'll find a very funny part of that segment see me and China Dow on that show we talk you know a little dirty little dirty we talk you know plain and real uh, about sex stuff and I don't know what it was on episode 10. I see, you know, because, you know, women love that massage cream or something. And I accidentally said vapor or Vix vapor rub. And everybody knows you can't use that because it'll burn the hell out of her or burn the hell out of you. Well, I guess this idiot that emailed me didn't get the memo. Uh, hmm. I guess he let his old lady jerk him off with Vix vapor rub. Then he, he's mailed me, blaming me for this happening. Says, you burnt me up. It still hurts. I got to go to the doctor. And I'm sitting here. Really? You did that? Are you dumb? <laughs> now I tell China now. You know what? Don't say, you know, some stupid crap like that. Because people actually follow this on the internet. It makes you freaking cringe, man. Cringe. Oh, by the way. God bless America, baby. God bless it. But anyway, he actually did this. What is wrong with you people? Then you wonder why, because I've been getting shit about this one too. I say, don't go to protocol channels and take advice about how to be in an MC. If I had an idiot over on this other channel, let his wife give him a hand job or old lady, whatever she is, give him a hand job with Biggs Vapor Rub. When I was kidding, could you imagine what the hell kind of people are going over to them stations and what they're doing on the street? People have no common sense, some, some of these ones. When you're on the internet, you're usually dealing with some pretty shady people, man. Some people that have a lot of mental disorders. So when they go to these platforms like ours, they actually take a lot of it serious. You're kidding me. I, sh I looked at that, I was like, my mouth dropped. I was like, there's no way in hell... I wonder, because uh, China Dow was talking about freaking anal beads or something. I wonder if he made her do that, too, or, you know, the dildo thing, the glass dildo we were talking about. Ugh, I hate to think about it. But, yeah, you got to watch what you say on these platforms, man. I guess, especially on YouTube, see, my radio audience over on Spotify and iTunes and all that, they ain't stupid, they ain't crazy. It's only my uh, people that watch me on YouTube sometimes that are just freaks. I get it. You want to get your nut off. Everybody does. But damn, man, you don't have to go to that length. You know, that's just like, you're probably one of them guys that get uh, air vacuumed in one of them leather suits and stuff and let the woman beat the hell out of you. Next thing you know, she has nine inch heels in your schlong. You're probably one of them freaks, man. I swear. But some biker news a little bit. We're going to be talking again. The pagans are in the news. And one thing that you have to realize. Realize this quick. When they are in the news all the time. There's a concerted effort. By the media. 
and Leo to target them. Now, it's happening on two fronts. The media's doing it for clicks. Because, let's just be honest. Newspapers are dead. They're gone. Only old peoples look at newspapers. Same goes for magazines. They're dead. It's all digital now. It's all online. So they're going to do it for clicks. And what better way to do it than to get a motorcycle club that they can run off freaking TV shows reputation. That's what they do. Leo, on the other hand, if you followed uh, another story of mine where I talked about, well, we were able to hire 1,300 officers, baby. Yeah, they do it for the money. They want to make sure they get them budgets way up there, sonny. Way up there. And on the East Coast, let's just say they've had some problems. And I'm not talking about the clubs. They have had these lockdown orders. and all. Hey, by the way, did you see... Uh, Hey, if you're in Pennsylvania, hey, it's unconstitutional what your governor said, this according to a federal judge. Starting to all fall, man. Starting to all fall. But anyway, you know, you had those lockdowns. You had the riots. You guys are pretty screwed up on the East Coast, man. I'm just saying. You guys are just as bad as damn freaking uh, the West Coast with all your craziness. It's funny. You guys don't believe in science. This is a freaking empty vessel standing and uh, giving these things about uh, forest fires. No. If you believed in science, you buttheads, you would know that controlled burns would prevent all them wildfires that you're having out there. See, it's a natural process. It's science too backed. There's a fire that starts, it burns all over the place. Oh, nine yards, it's going to happen. It's been happening on the West Coast probably for hundreds of thousands of years. But if you do control burns, you clean that underbrush up, you won't have that problem. So who isn't listening to science? Hypocrites. Very hypocritical, man. Very hypocritical. You know, that's just like, you know, let's talk about it for a minute. You know, I know it's not biker news, but, I, you know, I got to talk. Uh, they just found in Russia a perfectly preserved ancient bear. We're talking this sucker's like 30,000 years old perfectly preserved man like the day it went in and got frozen did you guys know that antarctica used to be a tropical land or up north used to be a tropical land that's why you're finding like willy mammoths and the crap up there and these bears the earth goes through these changes but all you want to do is scare the hell out of people man you know, one of these days, I hope they start being real. But it is uncool for how the pagans have kind of been treated in, uh, you know, the news media. But we got this one story coming up. It's going to have a clip to it. Then we're going to go and uh, talk about uh, some Hell's Angel stuff happening. And boy, do we got a Corey Graf's wall of shame. You know, it's a sad state of affairs. You get these big full page write ups when it's a motorcycle club, but then you only get like, you know, a couple paragraphs when a cop does something wrong. You can tell that they're in bed together, and Leo and media are in bed together because if the media don't write the way they want, they don't get the inside scoop of a news story. That's how it all works. But I do encourage you guys to go look at Tim Pool's. Uh, channel and there's a bunch of other ones that are real cool right side broadcasting i love that channel they are freaking awesome they're young uh, journalists starting out and they follow the campaigns around they do some really good freaking reporting man so go over to check it out again pound dark side baby and then pound rock on we always gonna have that one so 
We're gonna go over and talk some biker news. Get your copy of the new age of Bike and Brothers. Bike and Get your most unbiased and trusted biker news now at HarleyLiberty.com. Founded in 2012, Insane Throttle Biker News has been the place that all bikers come for what's happening in the scene. Go over now and bookmark HarleyLiberty.com. Rock on. we go, NewJerseySpotlight.com. Michael Hill, anchor of the correspondent on this one. State agency. Training needed to counter threat a motorcycle uh, outlaw gang pagans. This in law and politics. Law enforcers say this was more than a violent attack on a Hells Angels member at a Newark gas station two years ago. They describe it as evidence of the Pagan's outlaw motorcycle gang moving into rival Hells Angels territory in northern New Jersey and the gang's escalating use of violence. That's what this new report, based on last October's public hearing and new evidence, conclude in the Pagan's quest to become the dominant motorcycle gang on the East Coast. There wasn't only violence between each other and their rivals, but there were also incidents of members of the public. Um, this is a group that uh, incites violence against anyone they feel is a threat or has disrespected it in any way. I plead the fifth. At the public hearings last October, alleged Pagan's leaders repeatedly pled the fifth to state commission of investigations questions. Then one surprised the panel. All I will say is that it is not the policy of this club for anybody to engage in any criminal activity. Law enforcers found the Pagan's resurgence and increased recruitment were a direct result of its new national leader, Keith Conan Richter, who rose to power in 2018. At his direction, the Pagan's patches over making smaller gangs members, violating its own rules to boost membership by allowing prospects to pay cash to join, and it relaxing rules to permit dark-skinned Latinos and some Asians, but no blacks. There are people who would hear that, Kathy, and say, huh? How do you explain that? Well, the, the Pagans, while they're not a specifically white supremacist organization, it would be fair to say that their membership has had white supremacist leanings. One Pagan's testimony heard at last year's hearing said relaxed admissions led to internal strife. There was a lot of dissent of the darker Puerto Ricans. They were black. They came from Puerto Rico, but they were black. And a lot of the white members hated it. You know, it's people quit over it. This year, Wildwood said no to the Pagan's annual roar to the shore. The gang's website reads, the city of Wildwood has determined that the rally is no longer fits the image of the city and has chosen to deny all permits necessary to host event. The Pagan's was founded in Maryland in 1959. The FBI identifies it as one of four outlaw motorcycle clubs in America. South Jersey has been its stronghold. What's been a little challenging is some of the northern um, communities are not familiar with the pagans. This is a new group that's coming into their areas. So um, there's been a little bit of a learning curve. Among the State Commission of Investigations recommendations to counter that threat, retraining of law enforcement to recognize motorcycle gang violence, and the State Attorney General's Office leading a law enforcement working group to identify, investigate, and prosecute outlaw motorcycle gangs. That was something that we heard from Again, law enforcement professionals who said that would be something that would be very helpful. Helpful to curb the estimated 300 members of the Pagans here in New Jersey out of roughly 900 spread across a dozen states. A lawyer for the Pagans did not return NJTV News' phone call. Michael Hill, NJTV News. Got to admit that uh, assault right there was some ass shit. Uh, but I'll come and talk about that at their closing uh, you know, segment. Anyway, the Herald News, Jeffrey D. Wagner arrests, and this is out of Westport, arrest at a Hells Angels fundraiser event might have fueled more debate over a non-related issue whether non-medical marijuana sales should be prohibited. 
I say 420 needs to be legal. Only damn thing Illinois has ever got right, even though they tax the hell out of you. Support your local dealer, I say. On September 5th, the Hells Angels hosted an event, quote, Rain Man Defense Party in Westport at the 560 American Legion Highway. Land on the property is leased by the New Bedford-based uh, business duo with hopes for developing a cannabis cultivation uh, facility on the site. Avril Andrade, owner of uh, Between the Rows LLC, took issue with how her business dealings in town were connected to this unrelated Hells Angel fundraiser. Well, let's see why. Uh, law enforcement in Westport and other communities closely monitored the event, which drew close to 129 motorcycle riders, as well as close to 60 other vehicles on the property and on property across the street. According to the release, two attendees were arrested. Michael Madras of Lao, charged with operating a motor vehicle without suspended license. Oh, come on, with the suspended license. Come on, why you gotta be such pricks? Alexander uh, Peach out of Westport was also arrested and charged with possession of meth and operating a motor uh, vehicle with a suspended license. But toward the end of the press release, police noted that the property is used by Between the Rose LLC. And we know the cops don't like marijuana. See how it works here? Who recently hosted a community outreach meeting as seeking a uh, host agreement for a craft cannabis cooperative. Quote, I absolutely feel this is part of the continued smear campaign established to slander and harass myself and both of my businesses. I had zero involvement with whatever party they are talking about or any other activities at the property other than the fact that I have leased land for the last six years to grow, uh, grow and provide chemical-free produce for our company. She plans on complaining to town officials. Police Sergeant Christopher Dunn in response said the department stands by the information. Oh, bull. Everything we said is factual, he said. Is that why you got riots going all over the country? Because you guys are factual? The property owned by Timothy Berea Sr., he has been the site of other Hells Angels events, according to Dunn. He said the organization has used the site for fundraisers for the organization and for members who are under federal indictment. Now you wonder why, cops, a lot of people don't like you. you, you now you know. Because you're bullshit. Specifically, the event was raising money for Christopher Ranieri, a Lynn resident known as Rain Man. The arrest and release comes among some recent marijuana debates at selectmen and planning board meetings. A group of residents submitted a petition to saw... Uh, Select men recently, in response, the October 3rd uh, town meeting will have an article looking to repeal a February town meeting vote which legalized the sale of non-medical marijuana in town. <sighs> Recent issues with the town police is part of the history of pot disputes on the property. Uh, there... Uh, because they're hosting an event with the angels on their property. Oh my God, they're going to use that to go against these people's businesses. And they wonder why, you know, Leo, you just need to stop your crap. You're not freaking God Almighty. You're not Superman. That badge and a gun don't entitle you to be pricks. Anyway, Sudbury Star. Hell's Angel member still not sentenced. By Harold Carmichael. A sudden incident date is still not set for full patch Hells Angels Nomad chapter member from Ottawa who has pleaded guilty to a drug charge in court. Uh, the guy's 33 who was facing uh, five charges arising from his arrest August 1st of last year and was in custody at the Sudbury Jail. Pleaded guilty via video conference July 29th to cocaine possession. Sentencing has been delayed a number of times. A date will now be set for September 16th. 
The court has heard that in the summer of 2018, Niagara Regional Police, Greater Sudbury Police, and Ontario Provisional Police started a joint investigation into cocaine trafficking that operated across Ontario. The Project Skylark. The investigation included the wiretapping of communications in April and June of a network of drug trafficking in Nova Scotia and Ontario and concentrated on the Red Devils Motorcycle Club and the Hells Angels Nomad Chapter. They identified him as a full patch member of the Nomad Chapter. Wiretap communications showed him selling cannabis products ranging in price from $250 to $300 an ounce. That ain't bad. Not bad. On August 1st, the search warrant executed at his home in Ottawa turned up cocaine, MDMA, Cannabis, cannabis edibles, maybe it was just supplying much needed, you know, out community outreach to, you know, help people who was in pain. Five bat locations in Greater Sudbury were also raided. Police here in here seized about four hundred twenty thousand dollars worth of drugs, uh, including methamphetamine, fentanyl, cocaine, and shatter. Five handguns, three long guns, and fifty thousand in cash were also seized. Uh, altogether, seven people were arrested. That from over the border. The Detroit News! James David Dixon is the writer on this. Man barricaded himself in a home in, on Detroit's west side with two hostages has released one person. The man ran in the home after allegedly firing a shot at Redford police officers. Detroit Police Chief James Craig said the man, 38, belongs to an area motorcycle gang. Police believe one of the victims may have been a former or current member. The man had two hostages. One hostage, a woman, was released. He expressed a desire not only to attack officers, but to take his own life. So we're exerting extreme patience. He told us he suffers from schizophrenia, but he hasn't taken his medication and was under the influence of drugs. We consider him armed and dangerous. Anyway, as for the his son was doing there Thursday morning or the relationship of either a man to a female, blah, blah, blah. There was a triple homicide that took place on June 11th. Uh, let's see here. Um, the 9100 block of, of Ellen. So he's a suspect in this. Three bodies were found. They were burned beyond recognition. Interesting stuff here. Very interesting. Anyway, that's on the Detroit News. And it looks like uh, whoever, let's see here. Richard Nelson Sr. in Detroit briefly talks to the media about his son, Richard Nelson Jr., who is said is one of the two hostages. And he has a Scorpions MC Detroit, but it does not say if the son is a part of it, yes or no. Might have ties to it. That's what about it is, right? Uh, I'm trying to look here. Yeah, don't see nothing. About that, I don't think he's uh, a member, but hey, if any Scorpions are out there, if he's not a member, let us know. Corey Graff's Wall of Shame, WUSA 9, God bless the USA, baby. Hyattsville police officer arrested, charged after alleged poolside or argument involving a gun and multiple teens? Lori has been suspended by the Hyattsville Police Department. What, does the Hyatt have their own, like, little town, you know, the Hyatt? <laughs> After Howard County authorities said they were investigating the crimes. By Nick Bokigan. Uh Private First Class Michael Joseph Lauer, 29. Uh, looks like he's a uh, Maryland... Uh, a Hyattsville, Maryland police officer faces seven charges of assault after a poolside. Okay. Private First Class Mitchell uh, Joseph Lauer, 29, was off duty on September 2nd around 7 p.m. when he confronted the teens at an apartment complex. Lori has been suspended by the Hyattsville Police Department after Howard County authorities said they were investigating the alleged crimes. 
Oh, involves him pulling the firearm. Okay. Uh, he has been uh, charged with seven counts of first degree assault, one count of use of a handgun during the commission of a crime of violence. An initial hearing for Lowry is scheduled in Howard County Circuit Court. No further information has been reported. That is your hall of shame, yes. Why are you pulling guns on kids, man? You, you know what, you asshole. You asshole for doing that. Most unbiased and trusted biker news now at HarleyLiberty.com. Founded in 2012, Insane Throttle Biker News has been the place that all bikers come for what's happening in the scene. Go over now and bookmark HarleyLiberty.com. Rock on. Hi, this, Hi, this is Chanel from Hollywood and Chanel Evening Show. Show. Join, Join us Monday, Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Sunday Standard, Standard Time, time on, Spotify, on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Podcasts and, and YouTube, YouTube for some, some fun times, times and very interesting, interesting entertainment. entertainment. See, See you there, there boys. boys. Get over there and subscribe to the new Hollywood and uh, China Dow Show uh youtube channel man i think you'll really like it man you get some good eye candy and you get some raw conversation yeah we're getting uh quite a you know busy chat room going on there man that's pretty cool all the chat room a lot of people are from my channel going over there checking it out seeing what weird shit we're talking about but that, hey that's cool man we really appreciate all the support and on spotify as well now, my final thoughts. Oh, boy, baby, am I going to get friggin' uh, rattled for this one. Oh, by the way, a new hashtag, pound, dark side, and, of course, pound rock on. Let's see him in the comment sections. You know, I, you know what? I might be the dark side, man, because it seems like all I report on are the bad things, like today. Like today. Bunch of bad things, baby. Uh, it looks like, uh, yeah, that thing in New Jersey is going to pipe up and they're going to start really going after them. You already know the feds are out there being uh, little busybodies. So it's just a matter of time. And you, you've seen that video. I don't know if the guy was an actual member of the Hells Angels, but he had a support shirt on. You know, my thinking and my reasoning as somebody on the outside looking at that, it's like, Really you had to do a baseball bat? The guy wasn't even freaking doing nothing but filling up his damn gas tank. And then you had to freaking wolf pack him. And I think I might be wrong. I might have to eat crow again. By the way, I had to eat crow with this one. Uh, this uh, previous story. But anyway, I might be wrong. A lot of independents and a lot of citizens will look at that and say, What the hell is wrong with you people? And you wonder why a lot of independents don't support MCs. They want to be on their own. They don't want to have any freaking uh, attachments to that kind of stuff. Because that is not about biking and brotherhood right there. That isn't about the club life. That's what they think. That has nothing to do with motorcycling. The politics of it. That actually gives off a very bad image when the media plays something like that. Now, me reading the story, you got three minutes of it. You've seen everything. And we reach a very large audience. So it's like, man, I don't know, man. Uh, that stuff has always been kept in the dark. <laughs> Pound dark side. And it never came out to the general public's view. But nowadays, everybody's crazy. You know, they think that it's all right to do that kind of stuff. And then when uh, Leo comes calling, next thing you know, it's poor me this, poor me that. The cops are picking on me. Uh, the cops are making this up. There's the conspiracy theories that go out there. You know, the tinfoil hats go on. And it's like, did you just see the same video I seen? So you tell me how they're making it up after I just seen the same video you seen. I'm just playing devil's advocate here. You know, maybe trying to make a point, maybe not. But it's like, seeing that, nobody wants to have nothing to do with clubs. And as far as I know, the club scene's on the downturn, man. It is very hard to get freaking people to join an MC. They just don't want it. Unless you get these crazy people 
they get their uh, junk jerked off by their old lady with Vicks Vapor Rub. They go to the protocol channels, and next thing you know, they start in that MC, baby. That's what's happening. But any freaking fair-minded freaking, uh, you know, anybody with any common sense ain't going to want to be involved in that. Uh, you know, it was hard for me to come to the realization that things are changed. They have changed. Nothing is ever going to be the same the way it was. Whole different ball game. The rubs and the higher class, they done got the freaking uh, lifestyle by the balls. They out there, they're congregating with Leo. They congregate with the corporations. And that type of stuff is looked down on now. Before, it was something to be admired. Everybody wanted to be in the club. But not so much anymore. Not so much. And then you have to say, do you blame them? Do you blame them after seeing that stuff? And do you blame, you know what? I am, that one video I did on RCs, my God, you freaking haters, get off my nuts already. Do you see why people want to join RCs and they want to learn more about RCs than MCs now? If you can't see why, after watching a video like that, why people want nothing to do with that, all they want to do is get a little riding club together with their buddies, Go ride, go party, and not have anything to do with that shit. But you guys can say, you know, you're against it. Have you guys even gone through the library of my uh, podcast or my YouTube channels and see how I feel about everything? I said it the other day. I will not tell anybody. I will not advocate to anybody. To join an MC. The reason being. Is the platform I'm on. Some people are stupid. Again. The instance where. The guy got a hand job with the Vicks Vapor Room. Those are the type of people out there. So how in the hell. In good conscience. Would I recommend an MC to these kind of people. You're crazy. And I know I say you're crazy all the time, but I think another thing that happens in this lifestyle, you know, the lack of common sense. See, people only look at what I say on the top side. They never go behind the meaning or what I do for my past stuff. They cannot understand some of the reasons I do what I do. See, you're out there, you get to listen. Me, I'm doing the show. And at the same time, in the back of my head, I'm doing a show hoping that I can educate someone who might be thinking about joining an MC that, is, that isn't ready. Steer them over to the independent side or at the most a writing club. That's the way I think about it while I'm doing these things. Because I know there are people out there that should not be in an MC. If you're going and looking for advice from an MC or from a protocol or even my channel, you don't need to be in one. It's not for you. Because one, you're probably too damn scared to walk up to somebody and ask them or hang out. You want to feel that you're about to do something important. That's why you come and watch the protocol set channels. You know what? I, I'm just going to be real about it. This is a biker news station. This is letting you know what's going on in the, the community. I'm not going to advocate for that. Yeah, there's a lot of money in that. And maybe, I, you know, if I needed the money, I should have. But I don't. I want a news-based program that can give you a biker's opinion on what stories you're seeing. That includes both sides, just like today. For those who say I don't give both sides of the story, you're full of crap. 
One instance I said, hey man, the media and Leo has a hard on for them. And on the other side of the story, I say, well, you know what? You, you know, looking at it from somebody on the outside, seeing that kind of stuff, guy getting beat with a baseball bat, and you wonder why nobody wants to join a club? That's given both sides of the story. But what's going to happen? People will only focus on what I said about the video. I already know everybody. I know the way people think. Then all the haters come. Oh, you guys. You, you know what? It's funny. Corey Graff, he does the wall of shame for us. He started a podcast, which if you're in the chat room right now over at YouTube, Corey, put the link in the chat room so they can go listen to your podcast. It's a very good podcast. He got his first hater and he was so excited. Because you know what? When you get your haters, you know you're doing good. I know how good I'm doing by how many haters I get. And boy, do they line up, man. Let me tell you. So Corey's going to experience that. I know BD's already got his haters, too. Oh, boy, does BD. You know, he's done some... I really enjoyed that uh, one about the three-piece, one-piece... Uh, you know, that was back in the day, it was a little different than how he explained it, but he's got his haters too, man. He's got haters, and he's even got other creators that copy his stuff. I don't remember, uh, you know what, I do did mention it, is like, damn man, BD, dude, these dudes just stealing your shit. <laughs> I was like, you spent three years making this video catalog, and next thing you know, people going through your catalog and doing the same topics as you. I was like, damn. <laughs> I feel for you, buddy. I really do. Uh, you know, BD's a nice guy, though. He don't go off on me. It's jackhammer time, man. I just don't give a shit. <laughs> I don't. You know, you got to call it out as it is, man. You see that going on. Hey, wait a second, man. I thought I'd seen this over on BD's channel. Well, you know, you don't got something to uh, you, you know, say on your own. You got to copy somebody else. That's all the way I think, man. Uh, but anyway, and you know what? There is a very dark side to the MC scene. Very dark side. Yeah, I go and say, yeah, it's only a few and stuff like that, which 99% of the time it is. But there's sometimes whole chapters get involved. There's your dark side. And yes, they get involved in the underworld. If you don't know what the underworld is, I oh God, I cannot help you. But please don't use Vicks Vapor Rub because I do not want to hear this shit anymore in my email from you guy. You know what? I know damn well you listen to this show too. Stop with the emailing. You know what? It ain't my fault you got blisters on your dick, man. That's your own damn fault. You shouldn't have. Oh, anyway. Next time, you know what? Try ice. That's what I can tell you. But there is a dark side. And a lot of people are not ready for that dark side. I think one of the reasons why I get upset sometimes, and it's not about this kind of stuff. You know, it is what it is. That's street. You know, what can I tell you? I can either tell you it's some weak-ass shit, or I can tell you, hey, you know, they had to do what they had to do. But when these guys get caught up is what really pisses me off sometimes. When they're only looking at maybe 10, 15 years, they start ratting. Just like that video you seen that we played with the Pagans, you had that voice that was hidden. That was a rat. Straight up rat, man, working for the cops. I hate that. I don't, I can't see it. You walk around in general public, you want the reputation, you want that all goes with it. You know, you might be pushing this club around, pushing that one around. And next thing you know, you get busted for playing the game and you're rattling off, man. You're giving names, phone numbers, dick size, the whole nine yards just to get out of what you're in. Think about that one for a minute. 
Now, another thing I cannot confirm that was in that video, and I've received messages after messages. I've even had people send in texts from members. I don't know if they're selling their patch, okay? And I don't care if the pagans are selling their patch. I don't care if they're flipping people. I just don't care. That's their business. That's their club. It has nothing to do with me. And actually, it's not news. How is that news if they're making people, you know, pay for their patches? That ain't... It's probably going to end up on one of them damn sites that have, uh, you know, no name, no face to it because they're coward pricks. They got no balls. How they look themselves in the mirror, I'll never know. But that'll probably end, you know, they're going to start calling the pagans fucking pop-up clubs now. And it's always funny. I always say it, man. One percenters go to that and it's like, really, you guys really don't know who you're talking to. You do not know who's behind that page. If you did, you'd walk with your head between your legs. Um, I'm just warning you, man. Maybe you guys should know what IESPs uh, are and all that stuff. Yeah, it's real easy to track where they're at. Volusia! Yeah, mm -hmm. But anyway. So... As far as uh, the Hell's Angel thing with that drug thing, my God, man. It's like, you know what? Get over yourself. So they're having fundraisers there. Who cares? It has nothing to do with the person wanting to open their business to cultivate marijuana. Don't you think 420, from a law enforcement view, has taken more lives than anything else. You put people in the joint for years for smoking pot or dealing pot. It's a damn plant for Christ's sakes. It goes back. When was the first report of it? Uh, 4,000 years in the Chinese dynasty? And you try regulating everything, man. That's why people are getting pissed. Bar it's Canada. Well, it's Canada. What can I tell you? It's Canada. It's always gonna be Canada. Uh, he'll be sentenced. Uh, what is it? October? Some shit like that. Uh, the Detroit thing. Uh, I don't know if he's a part of the Scorpions. He might. He might not be. All I know is they showed a picture. You've seen it if you were on YouTube or Facebook of a person wearing a Scorpions thing. That does not make him a member of the Scorpions, whoever's, you know, he's a suspect in that uh, triple homicide. So, with that, don't forget to subscribe, pound Dark Side and pound Rock On. Get over there, check out the Hollywood and China doll. If you're into freaky stuff, man, you're going to want to get on over there and check it out. The link will be in the description box. Just click that link, subscribe, hit that little bell. That way you are notified when we go on air. That one's usually Monday through Friday at 7 p.m. Where this one is Monday through Friday at 8 a.m. Central Standard Time on both of them. With that, I will talk to you guys later. You take care now. The show is now available on Spotify and all major platforms including iHeartRadio, iTunes, Stitcher, and more. Don't forget to become a subscriber on any one of these platforms so you can be notified right away when our weekly episode is uploaded so you never miss an episode. Hi, this is James Hollywood Machikari. Join our YouTube channel and get motorcycle madhouse and tons of videos related to the bikers. Join now by subscribing for free and become part of the crowd today. Always free and always entertaining. Don't forget to visit us at www.harleyliberty.com for your daily biker news. Rock on!